here. We're starting. Everybody, we're back for a second time because the first time was so good, so sensational that we just had to make it happen a second time. And you can see the enthusiasm in my face there. But honestly, okay. I am serious. Um, we are enjoying Live from Launch Arts, so welcome back. This is the second episode of Live from Launch Arts. And we are literally doing this at Launch Arts Media's offices. Um, so we do have to preface and say, the views and opinions expressed on this show are those of the authors and hosts and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Launch Arts Media. Any content provided by our bloggers, authors, or hosts are their opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything. And in keeping with Launch Arts Media for a second, uh, as part of a handshake agreement, very loose handshake, no, I'm saying that in jest, it was a firm handshake, we promote Launch Arts Media uh, as, it, as a brand. So I do want to say this, attention small businesses, brands, and organizations, get notice. Launch Arts Media provides standout marketing through two primary services, professional video and social media management. High level creativity, business knowledge, and branding expertise is what powers Launch Arts to help you better advertise your business, grow your audience, and boost overall awareness, which leads to sales and success. The marketplace is waiting, so don't delay. Visit LaunchArts.com to get started. And one last thing about Launch Arts Media before we get into our show. If you ever see these guys with these branded t-shirts for creativity around the city, around the region, you know Launch Arts Media is on the job. And you can pretty much bet that you're going to get a great product out of the video production, especially when you see the, these crew shirts around. So that's our Launch Arts plug. Simiatu, how are you? How have you been? I am good. All has been well, and I'm excited for today. Okay, yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited for every day. I think. Right. <laughs> we are like we're midsummer. This is like this is midsummer unofficially because summer is only a month old, but summer really begins like Memorial Day. So, uh, at the time of this live version of the li uh, live from Launch Arts, where um, basically what is it? July 21st. Mm -hmm. what, what is it? That's how, that's how busy I get sometimes. I don't know what day of the week it is. Um, but we wanted to talk about a few things today. And we'll discuss, you know, the topics ranging from world news to new entertainment news to culture news. Because we are a news, culture, and opinionated talk show. But we'll kick off, uh, I want to say in the culture. But it, it's American culture. And there is a, is a new... Kid on the block. Um, Independence Days. Summer 2021 marked the first year in U.S. history where Juneteenth was recognized as a federal holiday. Hmm. Contrasting with July 4th, a.k.a. Independence Day. The big question is, uh, do we feel that recognizing both Juneteenth and uh, Independence Day has formed a celebration dichotomy? That's a, a coin term. Uh, if you do think it's a good thing or a bad thing, will the perceived separation last for long? So I guess the question we're asking is, and you tell me if you've experienced this in me too, mm -hmm. this year, since Juneteenth was official, official, um, come July 4th, especially in the black community, mm -hmm. I think there was a wind down. Yeah. It was a wind down. And for the July was like, thanks for the day off. Right. <laughs> And and I and, and and you know I can only speak from ethnic basis, but I I want to even ponder to think if it was vice versa for a non-black community, uh, American citizen. But what's your take on it? Um, do you think it's it's, it's created a new separation? Do you think it's gonna last long? Um, I think as a black community, we tend to follow the trends. So, from my understanding, um, Juneteenth has been celebrated more so in the West states of the country. In the South. Or, yeah, and in Southwest. the South. They've been celebrating Juneteenth for as long as uh, they can remember or have been um, informed about it. And all up North, which is crazy because we're supposed to be the states that took in slaves and did all these things. And we're like 
the last to uh, be a part of the celebration each year. Um, for Independence, for me, I I don't really do anything except for like go see fireworks. I don't barbecue. Uh, yeah, my, my household doesn't barbecue. Uh, we're not having a house full of people. But I think just for the kids, because we have kids, we'll go watch fireworks. It's, it's, it's something fun to do. It's something to get out the house. But I'm like, how, what, like, are we really celebrating something, you know, a holiday? Because we do the same things every holiday. Uh, and also this year, Independence was on a Sunday. Right. Most folks were in church. Right. So definitely, yeah, like, uh, what is what is there really to do? And most people probably had to still work. I, I didn't. I don't work Sundays. I didn't, I didn't have to work on a Sunday. But most folks either had to still work or they was able to go to work later in the day. Right. For Juneteenth, um, I didn't do anything for that day either. <laughs> but I did express, like, if we are going to have, we're going to talk about celebrating. Um, I want fireworks. I want a parade. I want the full, the same thing we did for when, um, what is it, the Cleveland Cavs won the oh, championship. Yeah. I want that same energy. That's the five-year anniversary of that. Look, I want that same type of energy if we're going to celebrate something that um, was for our for the betterment of the people, uplifted us, made us feel better, um, gave us rights in a lot of ways. I want that same type of energy every year, and I don't want to have to spend my own money because to do so. I will say this: for the July gets its flowers. For the mm-hmm. July, you get big rollouts. Yep. So what you're saying is it might be a separation of things, mm-hmm. but. Make sure that you have the same pop and circumstance on both ends. Right. I, I agree with that. And then I will add to the, I'll add a couple couple little thoughts to it. Uh, one is they both celebrate freedom. So you have the True. freedom to do whatever you want to do. True. If you don't want to do anything, don't do it. Right. You know, so you write up, you write <laughs> on the money with it. It's like, hey, I don't want to do anything. So you don't have to do anything. So, I mean, that's one. And then number two is really, um, you know, uh, it's a long time coming. You know, and, and there's there's there are debaters and, 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 and controversial uh, opinions about Juneteenth, where some people are saying, "Oh, you were just throwing a bone," and right. and all of these things, and, and that notwithstanding, uh, you know, Black Americans in this country they need a semblance of pride and tradition. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're at a deficit from it, and I'm saying they're like I'm not included. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm speaking for my community. Right. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily uh, argue with anything that instills um, a look into the lens of our history because history is important. Yeah. So I'll leave it at that and say, you know, this country has a lot, a lot of ways to go in terms of unification. But if these are two divided freedom days, it's because freedom was divided. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think because we stay focused like on holidays. So we, we come together because it's a holiday, but then we, we make ourselves, remind ourselves of why we're celebrating. So um, I definitely understand history is important, but I definitely have understanding don't dwell on it. Right. So we can move forward. So for those that want to complain, like you shouldn't celebrate 4th of July, you should celebrate this. Hey, put a parade on for us. Get a group of people together that will fund it and do something versus um, just be a negative vibe and, and try to come against people. Because I'm pretty sure you at somebody's house eating, mm-hmm. drinking, mm-hmm. having fun with the you family. You take advantage of the day off. Like, you're definitely enjoying it, regardless of how you're feeling, how deeply involved you are with history. You're still going to mm-hmm. enjoy that day off, eat some food, be amongst your family, mm-hmm. drink if that's what you do, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So If you don't spend the day protesting it, Exactly. Then you're partaking. It's it's, it's so, like pointless just to yeah, don't, don't, get on post, get on get on any social media platform and troll. That's the word I'm gonna use today. Right. Right. Okay. So moving on, we're gonna move on. We spent quite a bit of time on that topic. We like to bounce around, so we go from something that's more culture oriented or uh, you know just national news to we like to do news and entertainment. Mm-hmm. And I, and and this particular topic is 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 now polarizing due to the individual Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's a buzz in the music world at the time of this live stream 
and it is centered around Kanye West. So, to a growing amount of buzz, Kanye West is set to release Donda on Friday, July 23rd. Now, early critique has been mostly positive, and Kanye West tends to do this. Uh, no matter what's going on in his personal or public personal like mm -hmm. <laughs> world, because yeah. he lets a lot of his personal world be public and through his rants and his tirades. No matter what's going on, he seen, he can always kind of uh, uh, you know round up some really good music. Mm -hmm. He's a great genius in that world. So Kanye has been increasingly controversial and polarizing in recent years. Uh, but the opinionated question is, does good music, no pun or pun, does good music redeem his actions? Hmm. So we're talking about uh, a legend, a uh, first ballot music slash rap music slash rock and roll Hall of Famer. First ballot. There's no denying who he is. But there is there are many detractors to his um public personality okay. but when he comes out and hits you with a nice album are you inclined to say I'm not even tripping over like you being showing political leanings or speaking mm -hmm. against historical context or you know see you're remembering some of this stuff now <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell it, tell it, yeah yeah um, you know it, it's, a, it's a litany of, of things that he's done uh, but does good music, does good music trump? No pun. Does good music trump all of those things for you? No. So, so here's the thing. Because when you were speaking, here's the two words that came to mind. Skills versus character. And they're definitely separated. And both are, both are important because his skills help him make his money. But his character is who he is and who he has always been over the years. But honestly, if you would have never even said half the stuff that you just said, I wouldn't have remembered it because I'm not following him that closely to remember. Mm -hmm. So if he, so what would happen is I probably wouldn't even know he dropped the album if this wasn't brought up. But I would have seen it on somebody's social media in my timeline saying, hey, you're dropping the album. And I probably would have listened to that. And that's all my focus would have been on is the music, not the fact that he did wear the Trump hat. Um, he was married to a Kardashian. <laughs> um, his mom died. Like all those things are important. Those are his. That is his history. But I'm not reminded of it um, when I listen to his music, unless he brings it up in the music. Then I was like, oh yeah, I remember that happened to him. Right. But um, I definitely separate the two. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a personal relationship with him, so right. who am I to? To say what's going on, I can only have an assumption of this is why he's doing this, but I don't really know. Right. I'd have to have like continuous conversation with him. So no. Um once so I can't say yes or no. It will probably have to be like, hey, if I'm if I'm only concerned with him about his music, then that's my only concern. Right. And uh it don't even gotta be a celebrity, that should just be across the board. Like just forget that man. Yeah. And just I think we hold I think we hold our celebrities uh under a microscope mm -hmm. and we judge where we wouldn't judge everyday people right. so uh decisively. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. I've had my like as a fan, I'm oh my god, I was a, a really big fan of Kanye West early everybody mm -hmm. say first three albums and they dub it the old Kanye. Because not only was he kind of like on a tear in terms of, uh, uh, you know, hit records, but uh, I think that his state of mind was a little more balanced mm -hmm. at that time. And he was also a, a for the people kind of artist. Yeah. Um, if I am kind of examining him as a personality, it's because a lot of his information is public. Mm -hmm. And when his mother passed, you saw a, ch a shift in his in his personality. Right. And we, and we That's yeah. trauma. You will see that mm -hmm. in everyday people as yeah. well. You see that in everyday people, mm -hmm. and that's trauma. So, I'm. Th this is in real time that I'm rationalizing with my my stance. Maybe a couple years ago, I think he dropped an album called Pablo, and I wasn't even here for it. I was. I'm not listening to that. This mm -hmm. dude is off the rails, mm -hmm. and I'm not. I'm even, so. And you, as a consumer, you could say, if I don't agree with somebody, I'm not going to support their music. Mm -hmm. And then some of it wound up getting to me anyway. You know. Right. So. Did you like it? Mm, 
I would yeah. probably like 40% of it. Okay. Um, you know, but I, I like the buzz that's happening here, and mm-hmm. I am going to be all ears and check it out because I think when we all grow and evolve as people, and just because people do things that might upset you, you have to understand everybody's living their own journey. And if you really know his batting average is high for the music, right. hey, you know, sometimes you can't get everything out of everybody, but if you can get some greatness out of them, then, uh, hey, you know, take it for what it's worth. So I'll be listening to Donda, and it's named after his mother. So well, you know, I was, I was wondering what, where the name, yep. I was seeing the thing, like, I wonder where the name came from. Yeah, so, you know, this is me uh, publicly saying, and I know a lot of, uh, a lot of other uh, former Kanye fans will have to come to terms with themselves. This is me probably saying, I'm back in. So let me see. <laughs> let me see back what, in, what he has to offer as a, as a musician. Okay? So we're going to move on. We are spending quite a bit of time on topics today. But our last topic today is, is considerably world news and out of this world news. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of this world news for just a minute, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, just this week... Amazon chief, well, not the CEO anymore, but Amazon founder Jeff Bezos blasted into space uh, on his rocket company's first flight with people on board, becoming the second billionaire in just over a week to ride his own spacecraft. So this is from the Associated Press. This is what I'm reading. The Amazon founder was accompanied by a handpicked group, his brother, an 18-year-old from the Netherlands, and an 82-year-old aviation pioneer from Texas. Uh, and that was a female. Um, so on that flight was a record, the youngest and oldest to ever fly in space. I'm keeping 100. I was afraid for that lady. Because <laughs> 82, you know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm glad she made it back down. Uh, Bezos quotes, best day ever. And said that the capsule touched down on the desert floor in a remote West Texas after about a 10 minute flight. So this is a, a an accomplishment in, in I guess we want to call it space aviation mm-hmm. and, and technological advancement to, for civilians to regularly go up. And it's a, it's a, it, it's posing a new, uh, it's a genesis of uh, space travel just for anybody who can afford it. But the, the, the points we want to ask here is, number one, do we foresee civilian space travel becoming a reality in the near future? And then we'll get to a second question is, Is the notion of space colonization important to you? So first question, and we always leave it to me, I too. (laughs) Uh, Do you foresee civilian space travel becoming a reality in the near future? Um, I'm going to say yes. I mean, you got to think about it. Those that work for NASA and astronauts, they're considered civilians too. They just go through the training and are able to withstand that training to go into space. So I'm going to say this. If I had money to buy my own spacecraft, I could withstand the training that they have to go through to make sure that they can handle outer space. I would do it. It's something you it's something you would never do. Anybody can go mountain climbing, hiking, or whatever people want to spend their money on. Stop being mad at folks because instead of buying another boat, buying another house, taking another $10,000 trip, wherever, they choose to hey, let's do something that many don't get to do. And he brought some folks along, an 82-year-old woman. Evidently, she was able to go because she could withstand the training. Um, That's a fresh take. Yeah, like, you have to go through training. We just not, you, today I say, yes, I, I want to, I, I buy a, a, a ship, and then tomorrow you you up there. No, I'm pretty sure the same way we got to train for track, train for swimming, uh uh, look, get ourselves together just to be parents. It's the same thing with going you have to up. Clear and, yourself. Yeah, you, it's 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 going to space. He, I don't know if he has kids. I don't, I don't know, but right. he's I'm at a point. Sure. Look, he's at a point in life where I got the time, I got the money, and, I can, and I'm going to do this. See, Amazon is clocking. Like yeah. your now, Amazon I'm, shoppers, including myself, because I show sure be on there heavy. <laughs> hey, y'all, y'all, the reason why he's able to afford this thing. Stop being mad. Just be like, wow. Like I would rather continue to get more information, um, have a documentary on his experience so he can, you know, tell us about it. What's, what's, what happened? How did it make you feel? How long did it take? All of those things. I, I look at it as like he was at Cedar Point on like the biggest ride because he shot up into the air. Mm-hmm. You know about this, Harrison? 
Mm-hmm. Harrison's here. I didn't introduce him earlier. <laughs> Say hey, Harrison. Hey, Harrison. Hi. <laughs> He's producing. Um, shout out. Basically broke through the atmosphere. Floated for like a couple minutes. So he didn't even go anywhere. Y'all he, he tripping. Just, he, I'm thinking like he went to a planet or something. He didn't even... <laughs> he went to the moon. He didn't even do that. He just... He just... He just left... Stop he it. left Earth a little bit. You know what I mean? He did. So... Some of y'all probably scared to get on planes. Stop yeah. It. A lot of people are scared to get on planes. So, you know, but the first question is, do I foresee civilian space travel? I'm going to say yes, but I'm going to put an asterisk. Only for the really, really, really rich. These are two billionaires and they can only pop out you know, of the atmosphere for a minute, uh, seemingly. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, they're probably spending their fortune trying to be in an international space station. That's a they've been talking. Of, they've been talking about space station hotels for like the last decade. It that's a ways off. Mm-hmm. The second question to me, um, the second question posed is: uh, Is the notion of space colonization important to you? Yep, it is. Now. I'd like to love to hear your your take on that. Simple because if the Earth is uh, y'all, we not taking care of it the way it's we supposed to be. Uh, hey, it's gonna get tired yeah, of get us. Get up out of here. Y'all have seen the movies. I don't care. Nobody say some of the movies got some type of uh, truth to them. Mm-hmm. Um, the movie with uh, Mark Wah- Wahlberg when the grass is acting up. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember either. But but no, no. I you know I think intelligent intelligence agencies bleed a mm-hmm. little bit of truth a little bit into the fictitious tales mm-hmm. De- know, definitely but know. it's it's some truth to it yeah like know. it's we're it, so we're human beings and this all of this is left to us to take care of and we have a nice amount of people who go into the field of taking care of nature and taking care of animals and being doctors and whatever other ologists i'm gonna use that word that they're supposed mm-hmm. to be and they give us information Based off how we're taking care of the earth, so mm-hmm. it's possible that hey, this may this may be this may be the ends at some point. I, we may not be here, but I watched on CNN and they mentioned uh, like one of the talking heads. I know that's kind of offensive, but one of them mentioned they said um, dinosaurs had no idea that their existence was ending, mm-hmm. but we do exactly. So that's a good phrase. So um, to the question, do I think space colonization is important? I do. Mm-hmm. However, um, selfishly, as I know, like the world is eroding and climate mm-hmm. change is changing, I get a feeling that by rapidly, they mean still like another couple centuries. And I'm like, I'm not going to be around. But yeah. <laughs> selfishly, yeah. because I was still, you know, Lord willing, have generations here. And not even just my own legacy, yeah, but in humanity in general. Yeah. Humanity. Uh, has been a beautiful, um, you know, thing. And you want humanity to survive. You want other people to experience life. I don't know what we're going to find out there. I don't know if anything is uh, feasible in terms of sustainability. Mm -hmm. But if we are advancing and able to explore, then why not? You know what I mean? That's that's like having a, a, a 5G phone and only playing Pong on it. Right. Put some new games on there, man. You got the, you, you have the you have the ability, you have the capability. If we're growing technologically, um, I do I am in favor of making sure that on Earth, as societies, we have our ducks in a row. Mm-hmm. We're working in more harmonious, you know, step. Um, but there will there will always be conflict, you know. So mm-hmm. we can't solve all of Earth's problems and then say Okay, now let's open the book on space travel. Right. We can walk and chew gum. We can we can we can work down here and work on going to space. Is what we've been we doing. We definitely can. We got yeah. enough people. Exactly. So. And here's enough money. Stop playing. Right. I mean, yeah. There's enough people that will invest into this. So. Yeah. And that's another question, though. There is a lot of money put into, mm-hmm. um, you know, space travel, and now there's a, even a military force for it. Now we do need to distribute money to impoverished areas here on Earth. Mm-hmm. So you know. It's, we can't tell people what to do. We're just giving opinionated news and talk, but we can't put it out there for people to, to continue the conversation with. Definitely. So, yeah, we had some pretty serious topics this episode, and uh, we got a fun one bubbling up for next episode. Do we? Uh, remember uh, customer service? <laughs> yes. That's a preview. Um, very, very, very uh, highly opinionated conversations there. Is it going to be about... Uh businesses across the board not just yeah it's not okay. We, okay. We, 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 you know what we're gonna have a series set okay customer service part one 
Yes, let's two. talk about it. But to the viewers out there, Live from Launch Arts, again, is an opinionated news, culture, and talk show. And if you have any topics you think we should be discussing, please leave them in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, um, and we thank you for watching again. But before we take off, again, we do this from Launch Arts Media. Special thanks to them. And we want to say that attention small businesses, brands, and organizations get noticed. Launch Arts Media provides standout marketing through two primary services, professional video and social media. The marketplace is waiting, so don't delay. Contact Launch Arts Media today. Visit LauntArts.com to get started. So, Simiatu, we've done it again. I'm Jamar. Simiatu, shout out to Harrison, and we will see you next time.